morning, church. Why don't we stand to our feet this morning? I don't know about you, but I had a great Thanksgiving week. I had a lot of food to eat. Anybody can say amen to that? Oh, dear God. It must have been terrible. <laughs> um, I had a lot of turkey, prime rib. God is good. But you know what? Nothing beats coming to the house of the Lord. Amen? To be able to worship freely. Like, to be able to worship freely. How many of you are thankful for that? It's great to have food on my stomach, but I'm so thankful that I can worship the Lord. He's done so much for me. Uh, hallelujah. God, we just pray and we ask that you have your way in the service. Come on, just pray with me if you want God to have his way. God, we just ask that you would move and that you would touch every life that you would touch every heart, Jesus, every heart that might have come in with bondage today, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We thank you that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and your spirit is here today. We thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you for the price that you paid on the cross. We thank you, Jesus, that it is because of the shedding of your blood that our sins are forgiven and not just that our sins are forgiven, but that we can be free from sin, amen? Hallelujah, Jesus, and we just wanna thank you and we want to praise you, and we want to bless your name today. We want to lift you up. We want to exalt you. We don't want to exalt our problems because that's not what saves us. We're going to exalt the solution that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sing, O Come. O Come, let us adore Him. O Lift your hands. One 
more time. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. You are holy. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, that you are worthy. We are, you are worthy of being lifted up and you are worthy of being adored. We worship you, God. With everything within us, we're going to bless your holy name today. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes, Jesus. my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you die for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name. Let that up 
sing worthy is your name and worthy is your name Jesus no other name that saves heals and delivers but the name of Jesus you deserve the praise come on keep singing worthy that worthy is your name worthy is his name come on and worthy is your name that name saved you Jesus that name delivered you hallelujah you deserve the praise worthy is your name Come on, sing, worthy is your name. And worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Come on, sing, be exalted, be exalted. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Now in the heavens, we exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Now bring it down. Sing, Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Yes. Jesus. You and you alone deserve the praise. You deserve the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy is your name. Sing worthy. And worthy is your name. Yes. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. We thank you, Jesus, that you are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy of our adoration right Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And oh, the glory of your presence. you reverence. We give you reverence. So arise. So
presence that is already in this place today. We thank you for your spirit that is moving over us. We thank you for the gift of everlasting life, God. We just thank you for what you've done and for what you're going to do. Yes, Jesus. Let's just take a minute, just a minute. Let's just lift our praise unto God. I've said it before and I'm always going to say it. You don't need singing to worship the Lord. He's been too good. He has been too good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to thank him personally. Even when I wasn't faithful, he was. I was more faithful to the world and sin than I was to Jesus. But still, he was faithful. That's called agape love. That's called unconditional love. He loves us unconditionally. I could go out and I could save a million people for the glory of God, but he wouldn't love me anymore. That's crazy. And I praise you alone for that, for your love. It didn't matter what I did. All that matters is what you did. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to go into a season of welcome and greeting. We're going to take a few minutes out. You can do that at this time. God's blessing upon each and every one who is with us here this morning in our uh, morning worship service and those that are joining us online. We trust that God's uh, presence is very real as you draw near to him today and uh, come and join together in faith to believe for uh, God's word and his spirit to work in each and every one of our lives. We want to take just a moment to greet anyone that might be with us for the very first time, whether in our in-person worship or if you're joining us for the first time online. We welcome you. Uh, those who are here in the sanctuary, there is a Connect card in uh, one of the chair back pockets very close to you. If you would just take a moment and fill that out, and you can either place that in the giving box receptacle at the close of the service or turn it in at the welcome desk in the lobby. And again, for our first-time worshipers online, please do contact us if you'd like information about the church, have questions about Living Waters Chapel, we would be happy to get back in contact with you in the very near future. So welcome to any and all first-time worshipers. By way of announcements, we just want to remind you this uh, coming week on Wednesday evening, December the 1st at 7 p.m. is our monthly sacred assembly for the month of December. And so uh, please join us here for a time of prayer and worship and seeking the Lord uh, together and his guidance as we enter into the Christmas season. As well, we want to remind those that are interested, our uh, uh, December caregiver's breakfast is going to be on Saturday, December the 4th at 9 o'clock in the morning uh, here at the church. And the topic that will be addressed, when caregiving ends. And so uh, if you are in a situation, whether within your family or maybe even professionally or part-time that you work uh, and giving care and assistance to someone in need, 
Uh, this is designed especially for you, and so we hope that you will sign up and uh, come be a part of that. Uh, for our ladies, we want to mention that Victory's Journey, uh, this class, especially for women who are seeking uh, and longing for inner healing, this will begin on Wednesday, December the 8th, and uh, we just trust that you will come and be a part of this. It's uh, quite a series of, of classes and sessions, and uh, we make this available periodically here at the church. And uh, so, ladies, if uh, any of you are interested, have not signed up yet, uh, you may please do so and uh, be here on December the 8th for that cl the first class session. And then we would just want to thank everyone who has participated in the Adopt a Family and Angel Tree programs. All of the tags were taken. We mentioned that last week already. And we just want to remind you of the deadlines for the Angel Tree uh, project. The deadline for bringing unwrapped gifts into the church is Wednesday, December the 1st. So that's this Wednesday. And then for the Adopt a Family, the deadline to drop off any unwrapped gifts is Sunday, December the 12th. And so please be aware of those deadlines and uh, pay attention to that so that we can process the gifts and get them where they need to go to the families uh, that they will bless in appropriate time. And then uh, we just uh, thank God for his uh, blessing in our lives and in our congregation. We just want to mention uh, if you would like to be a part of either uh, a home handyman team or a meals team to be a blessing to families in need, uh, there are surveys out on the welcome desk. If you'll take just a moment and uh, fill one of those out and leave it with us. If you feel led and inclined to uh, help and serve in one of these uh, serving ministries, either as a, as a handy man or handy woman. I mean, if you, uh, you can fix a broken drawer or uh, replace a doorknob and you're a lady, we're not going to turn you away. We want anyone that has those kinds of gifts and inclinations and, again, uh, those who like to prepare food and prepare meals for families in need, uh, we would like to, uh, to see this ministry strengthened. And so please fill out those surveys. At this time, I'd like to direct your attention to the screen as we uh, look at some of the uh, upcoming grow groups for these winter months that are before us. The winter session is upon us. Get plugged into one of these grow groups. Continuing classes. Our prayer room is a place where you can intercede for our staff, our church worship services, and our listings in the weekly prayer bulletin. When believers call on God's name, powerful things happen. Isaiah. Prophet of the Holy One of Israel, instructor Pastor Richard Weitzel. For the winter session, we will study the second division of Isaiah, God's judgment of the nation surrounding Judah in the 7th century BC. God underscores his warning to his people not to trust or fear any potential foreign ally or adversary, but to trust him alone. Zechariah, instructor Justin Harrell. Zechariah was given a glimpse of future events. In this session, we will conclude the book, examining Jesus as Savior, Judge, and King. The Book of Ezekiel, Instructor Joe Paris. God raised up Ezekiel to serve as a prophet during a most difficult time in Israel's history. Even though he faced opposition at almost every turn, Ezekiel chose to remain faithful and stay true to his convictions. Praying circles around your children. Instructors Pastor Jeremiah and Candace Gruber. Parents have a surprising secret weapon to parenting, prayer. Your prayers have the power to shape the destiny of your children and your children's children. Parables, the greatest stories ever told. Instructors Pastor Chris Light and Norman Rice. In this session, we will complete our study of 12 of the greatest stories ever told. Then, Joshua, the power of God's promises. Can we count on God to keep his promises? The answer from Joshua is a resounding yes. This class will contain 12 studies that will give you assurance that God is listening and dependable. Other new classes, Growing Through Grief, Instructor Carla Major. This group is to help attendees understand the process and normalcy of grief. If you feel, I'm the only one to experience this, you're not alone. Let's join together and grow through the process of grief. Rooted Young Adults, God's Armor Bearer, Instructors Courtney Becker and Alicia Light. This is a call to action. Each of us has something unique to offer the body of Christ. Join us as we learn about the spirit of being an armor bearer, serving, supporting, and working together. Well, we encourage you, if you are not a part of one of these uh, Sunday Grow Groups, that you would just... Uh, 
uh, make the effort and visit one of them. You don't have to commit, but just visit and check out one or more of them and see if there's one that uh, resonates with you, uh, with uh, maybe a part of the Bible that you have not studied uh, for some time or are not as familiar with, and uh, be a part of both the fellowship and the learning in these Sunday morning grow group sessions that begin at 930 every Sunday. Uh, we just want to thank you again for your faithfulness and giving to the Lord. Again, if you're a first-time worshiper with us this morning, uh, we just remind you we have giving boxes placed on the walls on either side opposite the sound booth area at the back of the sanctuary that you can leave your Connect card, you can leave your offering, uh, any other prayer requests you can leave in those boxes as you exit the sanctuary this morning. And uh, we thank you again for your faithfulness in giving unto the Lord and honoring him. This time I'd like to direct your attention once again back to the screens for an introduction to Pastor Chris's message this morning. turn to say good morning and welcome to Living Waters Chapel, whether you are worshiping with us in person or you are joining us online. All right, I'm going to do a, a poll this morning, a survey. This is like the, the burning question that is out there. Now, maybe you're not seeing it on the news or hearing about it, but it is a burning question that I need just an answer to from our uh, Living Waters Chapel Church family. So uh, if you're watching online, please give us a comment in the comment box. And then we're in person here. We're going to do a show of hands. Okay, how many of you put up your Christmas decorations before Thanksgiving? Let me see your hand. We have a few that do that, followed with a groan. I heard a groan. I heard a groan in the house. All right, how many of you put up your Christmas decorations after Thanksgiving? Let me see your hands. Okay. Maybe some of you don't decorate at all. I don't know. But, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a question that we have. When is it appropriate to begin to put up the uh, Christmas decorations and things like that. So this morning you might be sitting there thinking, uh, Pastor Chris, uh, we're in November. Why are you beginning a series of messages about Christmas? Well, I will answer that question for you within the context of my message this morning. But as, uh, as you know, we are approaching the uh, Christmas uh, season. Maybe some of you were uh, out doing shopping uh, in the stores. You were, you were trying to take advantage of some, some, uh, some deals and some, some great things that are uh, taking place. Uh, just in case some of you were wondering, Pastor Chris, what did your shopping look like on Friday? I'll tell you what my shopping looked like on Friday. 
It involved a weekly trip. Keyword, weekly trip. To Patch's Family Creamery. For my ice cream, hallelujah. Amen, brother. I got a word out there. I receive it. That was, my, that was the extent of my shopping on Friday. No lines. We had the whole place to ourselves. It was great. It was wonderful. And I will continue to enjoy the blessings of the ice cream. I personally will enjoy it. Maybe my waistline won't, but that's another story for another time. One of the things that I, I enjoy uh, about uh, Christmas, and this is one of these um, special uh, things that I would watch growing up as a child. I would, I would watch the Charlie Brown Christmas. All right? How many of you, another poll here, watch, you watch the Charlie Brown Christmas? Yes, we see some hands going up. Maybe you're not a fan of Charlie Brown and, and, and the Peanuts, but man, they are like, they're my favorite. I, I enjoy watching them. I enjoy uh, looking at those. But within that uh, Charlie Brown Christmas, have you ever felt like Charlie Brown in a Charlie Brown Christmas and echoed his words... Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Maybe we sense that. Maybe we experience that. Well, Linus, in a Charlie Brown Christmas, answers this question for Charlie Brown. For those of you that know it very well, Linus approaches center stage. He says, Lights, please. And he begins to quote from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. There were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Linus looks at Charlie Brown and he says, this is what Christmas is all about. And then he reaches down, picks up his blanket and he walks off stage. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed in that particular scene that when Linus says, fear not, he drops that blanket. And for those of you that are familiar with the story and familiar with it, you know that that blanket for Linus represents his security. So this season, what is it that you and I need to release and let go of? What is it that we need to give to God? 
That's a question that only you are able to answer. Each and every one of us may need to release something or someone to God. So we have this question. What exactly is Advent? We will hear that this season is, is referred to as the season of Advent. And Advent means coming or arrival. And Advent is celebrated with the four Sundays prior to Christmas. That is why we are beginning this morning. Because this is as if you don't need any more stress in your life. But this is the first of four Sundays before Christmas. Then it's December 5th, December 12th, December 19th. Those are the four Sundays that come before Christmas. So this word Advent means coming or arrival. And within this season, it includes expectation. It includes waiting. It includes anticipation. And it includes longing. You see, we will look back on the birth of the Messiah. But we will be looking forward Remaining alert to the second coming of Jesus. Remember, this is not our home. This is not our final resting place. For the follower of Jesus, we have a heaven that awaits us. So this season can be oftentimes marked with busyness. Frenzied busyness. For some people, they will maintain a pace like no other throughout the rest of the year. I will just say, God bless you. I will pray for you. If, if you're one of those people that is fast and furious during this season. You see, Advent is an opportunity for us to prepare our hearts and place our focus on a far greater story than our own. This is the story of God's redeeming love for our world. This is a season of expectation and preparation. It is an opportunity for us to align ourselves with God's presence more than just the hectic season of presence. Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 2 reminds us the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. So this is a celebration of God coming to us in the darkness. Do you remember when God met you in your moment of darkness, in your time of darkness, in your season of darkness. It's a celebration of God coming to us in the chaos. God is still a God who comes to us in the chaos, in the midst of, of all the pain, in the chaos of our lives. And God is a God who comes to us and He makes a way for us. God is still a God who is in the way-making business. So I just would encourage you to just allow the loving arms of God to embrace you in this season that you find yourself in and realize that we have the gift of hope. This morning we're going to be focusing on hope. By looking at hope past. Hope present. And future hope. As we journey toward Christmas. Now there is a significant difference. Between worldly hope. And biblical hope. Worldly hope is characterized by doubt, uncertainty, 
and a lack of control. Maybe some of you, before you went to bed last night, said, I hope it snows. If you were Pastor Chris, you said, I hope it snows just a little. Leading from a Saturday night into a Sunday morning. You might say, I hope when I go to my favorite restaurant that they don't run out of the special that is listed in the menu or on the menu. So this type of hope, this type of hope, a worldly hope is characterized by doubt. It's characterized by uncertainty and a lack of control. But when we take a look at biblical hope, biblical hope is focused on Jesus and his hope, the hope that Jesus gives us, the hope that Jesus provides for us is a guarantee and it is a sure thing. That is the reality. That is the the difference between biblical hope and and worldly hope. Biblical hope is a quote-unquote no-so compared to a worldly hope, which is a quote-unquote maybe so. We're going to take a look this morning at hope past. We're going to look at some various verses of Scripture. I want you to consider this question. Just think about this. What is the longest you've waited for something? For some of you sitting there who don't like to wait for anything, well, here's another opportunity to practice and demonstrate The fruit of the Spirit of patience. (laughs) For some of the fruit of the Spirit, we may not have them mastered until we see Jesus face to face. But you see, the people of Israel, they knew something about waiting. When we look at the Old Testament, we see that the Old Testament is filled with prophecies about the coming of a Messiah. In Isaiah chapter 7... Verse number 14, it reads as follows. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So as you and I, as we look back on hope past, we gain confidence and renew our faith in God's promises to us. So as we look back, What we are doing is we are gaining confidence and we are renewing our faith in God's promises to us. So what is it that God has promised to us? Where is it that you and I need to gain confidence? When it comes to the things of of God, when it comes to biblical hope, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, reminds us of this. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. We find confidence in Christ's arrival and in all He has done in our lives throughout the years. You see, when... Jesus had come. He had fulfilled those promises. And as we look at Jesus and as we look at his arrival into our lives, 
we are able to look back and we are able to see what he has done in our lives throughout the years. We are reminded that God is going to complete his good work in us. And he will fulfill his promises to make all things new and complete. That is what we realize. That is what we understand. So in this season, may it be a journey of building confident hope as we wait for his coming. As we find ourselves waiting for Jesus to come. What do we find ourselves waiting for? What are you expecting? What are you waiting on God to do in your heart and in your life? What is it that you are are waiting? Is it for an answered prayer? Is it for the salvation of a loved one? What are you waiting for God to do? Number two, we have hope present. We're going to look at Luke chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 6. But in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, we see Jesus' birth foretold again. This time, his birth is foretold in a very personal and an imminent manner. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin, the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. When you think about this encounter that Mary had with the angel, I'm sure that in her present reality, it brought lots of questions. And throughout life we have from time to time lots of questions. And we are searching for answers. We are looking for answers. And we we sometimes wrestle with to know or not know. When you have questions And there are things that you are are looking for answers. Sometimes we wrestle with, do I really want to know the answer to this question? 
when I get the answer to the question, is it really going to change things? How is the answer going to impact the outcome? Because you see, I know there are, there are situations, there are circumstances in my life that I would love to know a definitive answer to the question. But the definitive answer to the question is not going to necessarily change the outcome. For some, it may give us a peace of mind. It may give us closure. It may give us a finality. But for others, depending on how you are, are wired and how your personality is put together, when you find the answer to that question, it's going to trigger a whole nother series of other questions that may or may not be able to be answered. But here we know from Scripture that Mary received a direct message from the angel. And it, it took faith for her to place her trust and hope in God. Jesus has come and he has made a way for us to be one with God. Through his forgiveness of our sins. And his coming changes everything. Jesus' coming changes everything. What you and I need to realize and what we need to understand is whether we have all of our questions answered or not, Jesus is working inside of our hearts, inside of our minds, in our lives. And what is He attempting to do? What is He trying to do? He is teaching us. He is shaping us. He is molding us to become more like Him. And I'm okay. Really, I am okay with not having all of my questions answered. If it means for me to not have all of my questions answered in order for Jesus to mold me and shape me and to make me become more like Him, I'm okay with that. That's the only way I'm okay with it. As if it brings me, if it draws me closer to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Jesus is our hope. During the good times in life, during the storms of life, you and I have secure hope in this season, no matter what you may be facing, no matter what you may be going through, you are not facing it alone. You are not going through it alone. Why? Because Jesus, He is our hope. He is our security. He is the one who keeps things Firm and secure. Finally, hope future. You see, Advent is not just preparing our hearts for Christmas, but it is also preparing our hearts for when Jesus comes again. We read this in Romans chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. There's that word again. Waiting and doing it patiently. There's a theme that is going on here. One that some of us have a difficult time embracing and practicing, myself included. Waiting patiently. If you've got it mastered, God bless you. I'm sure there's other fruit of the Spirit that you don't have mastered. But if you are like myself and struggle with patience and waiting patiently, there's lots of room on the waiting patiently boat. So come aboard, 
all right? We find ourselves in, in familiar territory and familiar company. But we cannot, oh, or we keep looking in confidence for what we cannot see. You see, our eager anticipation is like that of the person who drives all night. If you've ever driven through the night to go somewhere, or you, 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 you've driven all night, what are you looking for? You are eagerly looking forward to the sunrise when the, when the mist and darkness will be driven away. We know it's going to happen, and we can't wait. As I was driving in uh, to church this morning, it was still dark out, but I could see that sun rising through, through the clouds. And it is the assurance, Jesus, that carries us on. It is looking forward to being with Jesus. It is looking forward to receiving new bodies. I knew I'd get lots of amens there from you. <laughs> We're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. The rest and the rewards of our service. We're looking forward to our eternal family and home. We are looking forward to the absence of sin and suffering. We are looking forward to being face to face with Jesus. It's a natural occurrence for children to trust their parents. Even though as human parents we sometimes fail to keep our promises. But our Heavenly Father, however, never makes promises that He will not keep. Nevertheless, His plan may take more time than we expect. And rather than acting like impatient children, as we wait for God's will to unfold, we should place our confidence in God's goodness and wisdom. Even the most patient children, even the most Patient people at times will groan in anticipation when what they are waiting for is wonderful. It's difficult to wait patiently. It's a challenge to wait patiently. But I encourage each and every one of us to lean in to Jesus and to experience His hope to experience His security, to experience all that He has for us. As you and I wait for the return of Jesus, as we wait for the answer to a prayer, to our prayers, may we trust God's goodness. May we trust in His wisdom. As I bring my thoughts to a close this morning, we find ourselves in a season that is known as Advent, a season of preparation, of waiting, and expectation. I want to share with you an opportunity that we have as a church family to come together in preparation, in waiting, and in expectation. This Saturday, De December 4th, beginning at 6 p.m. and going to about 9 p.m., our young adults are going to be leading in a worship night, a time of worship, a time of prayer, a time of teaching. It's going to be hosted and led by our young adults. And they have invited us to be part of 
that evening. So if you are looking for an opportunity to experience preparation, waiting, and expectation, I would encourage you to join us on Saturday, December 4th at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary for a time of worship, for a time of prayer, and a time of teaching. You see, there is value as well as excitement in patience and expectant waiting. May this be a season of wonder as you discover Jesus bringing hope, love, joy, and peace. I don't know what you may find yourself waiting for this season. But I know that whatever you find yourself waiting for, that there is hope in our waiting. I invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to just close in a word of prayer. You see, the greatest gift that we have the opportunity to receive is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you have never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you find yourself, you've, you've walked away from your relationship with Jesus Christ. First thing that we need to do is we need to admit that we are sinners. We need to be willing to turn from our sins and repent and ask for God's forgiveness. We need to believe that Jesus Christ died for us on the cross and rose from the grave. And through prayer, we invite Jesus to come in and control our life through the Holy Spirit. We're receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you know you've walked away from Him, I would encourage you to pray this prayer. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I want to turn from my sins. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died for my sins. And that you raised him to life. I want him to come in to my heart and my life and take control of my life. I want to trust Jesus as my Savior and follow him as my Lord from this day forward. If you prayed this prayer, I say welcome to the family of God and you can please let us know in the comment box or you can talk to us in person. God, I pray for those who are here in person, those who are watching online that in this season of Advent we give you thanks we give you praise that we are able to unwrap the gift of hope help us to remember hope past help us to hold tightly to our hope in our present realities and wait with expectation for hope to be fulfilled when Jesus comes again. I pray for each individual, God, where they are looking to you to be there hope within a situation, within a circumstance. God, they are looking for prayers 
to be answered. I ask God that you would wrap your loving arms around them, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them, that you would be there all in all. And God, I pray this prayer a blessing over each one. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because of you, Jesus, and the hope of heaven, we believe and we know the best is yet to come. Amen. At this time, we will be saying goodbye to our online audience. Online audience, God bless you. Have a great day and a great week.